It is impossible for a monkey to survive FNAF 3. <laughs> well, unless you give it a tank. You guys seem to like my last video where I put the heroes through FNAF 1, so we're throwing them back in the office to see which ones will come out on top of this game where your winning prize is minimum wage, and your losing prize is Some will win, some will get close, and some will die night 1 by tripping on a Freddy mask. However, we gotta go over some slight alterations. No, the heroes are not allowed to damage Afton or the restaurant, but the adaptability stat is not going to be much of a factor since there's not really much to adapt. Just don't look at the ugly phantoms and spam that audio button. Another thing that doesn't come into play in FNAF 3 is light, because unlike the offices of the Ninja Kiwi programming team, FNAF 3 actually has lighting. That being said though, there will be many new factors that will come into play that will be mentioned later. First though, we're going to immediately place Adora and Jones in C tier with pretty much no upsides or anything to talk about. We're also going to place Obed in S tier for the exact same reason he was in last video. And we're also going to put both the people that will burn the pizzeria down in D tier. Gwen because, well, Gwen. And Fat Pusty because he probably put a pizza in the oven and forget to turn it off. First we have Quincy again. Now Quincy, unlike in FNAF 1, does have a distinct advantage that serves as a really good place to address another important upside. Camo detection. In FNAF 1, camo detection wasn't really a factor at all because none of them implied being able to see through darkness and it was pretty easy to see the animatronics on the cameras anyway. In FNAF 3 however, Williamus Aptonimus loves to play hide and seek with you, sometimes feeling like he's popping out of nowhere. So having some sort of tech or having a sharper eye means you'd be able to spot him out way easier than someone who doesn't, giving Quincy a bigger advantage than the average hero. So Quincy goes into the A tier for this video. Nice job Quincy, nothing got past your door. Just kidding. While we're here, we can also play Sada in the same tier because he's pretty much the same. If you watch the FNAF 1 video and then scroll through the comments, which you totally should if you haven't, you may have seen that there are some things I forgot to mention about Corvus. To start, his teleportation. So long as there's no rule against going to different places in the pizzeria, then he could just simply teleport away when there's any danger in his office. Or if that doesn't work, he can just gobble up their souls for a little snack, which will get rid of the phantoms and make Springtrap non-hostile. Is anyone else concerned that there's a monkey in this game that can literally harvest souls? I don't know, just put him in S here. Funnily enough, while writing this video, I unironically started to consider if Churchill could reach the security panel, but ultimately decided that I don't feel like bringing out the measuring tape on every single hero. So, we'll just assume he can. Other than that, he has his scuba diving goggles that can allow him to spot a needle in a haystack, or a rabbit on a gas station camera. So, A tier. And we'll also do the same thing for Brickle once again like we did in the last video since she can naturally see camos on level 7. Now the reason why I said Benjamin can even beat 5020 mode is because of his proficiency on all things computer like. That being said though, FNAF 3 isn't nearly as much about proficiency as it is about eyesight and audio. As far as that, there's no evidence that Ben would be able to spot Springtrap on the cameras really effectively, or deal with the phantoms easily. He'd literally just get jumped by every single mechanic in this game. Therefore, he gets a C tier. Azealia is the Wicked Witch of the West, so it makes sense that she knows stuff about dark magic and souls, but it's uncertain if she'd be able to deal damage or manipulate spirits to the extent that Corvus can. So with her knowledge of souls, we can only assume that she'd be B tier. But since she could also see camos, she accelerates up to A tier. Edian is an S tier. In FNAF 1, in this game though, he's an A tier. Like in FNAF 1, he could actually set up drones to keep better tabs on the place and keep better tabs on Springtrap. And while that does give him more flattering angles of spring ding, he doesn't really like to have pictures taken of him, so he'd probably just hide like he does with the regular cameras. Along with the potential that the phantoms could also intercept these cameras as well. And yes, the UCAV could still give him wall hacks, but that doesn't allow him to deal with the phantoms. It does allow him to keep permanent tabs on Springtrap though, so as long as he watched Ghostbusters, he should be good. Last video I made a point questioning if the animatronics are hostile towards children, to which someone corrected me saying that it's actually the FNAF 2 animatronics that aren't hostile towards children. That being said though, when it gets Lily Willy, being a child might actually make him more aggressive because child murder is his second favorite hobby next to creating robots that bite his own kids. Not to mention, just like Sai, Little Will is really smart, plus the fact that intellect isn't even much of a factor here anyway. So this game just leaves Sai without his intelligence factor, and along with an even more aggressive Afton who can't wait to get his hands on a child like he's EDP. C tier. The only thing his rejuve potions would be able to do is fix the errors, which could help on night 2, but on night 3, 4, and 5 where you collect errors like their Pokemon cards, having only 2 really hurts him. 
Spirit Trap can also easily avoid Geraldo's glue or just take offense around it. And as for the creepy idol, I've been waiting for you. Look! That is an impressive cleanup on Isle's The only item that would serve any use would be his camo potions, but unlike the other camo abilities heroes have, Gerardo's relies on a limited supply of potions, so it could end up running out in the middle of the night leaving Geraldo without that advantage. Unfortunately, while Geraldo was packing in FNAF 1, he's lacking in FNAF 3, giving him a B tier for the final list. Well, this list was a lot more make or break than the last one, with nobody but Geraldo in B tier and everyone either making it out or dying early. Well, at least my favorite hero is in S tier, Benjamin Franklin. Unfortunately though, he's also dead. Mm, what a bummer. Anyway, please like and subscribe as it really does help me make these videos for you all, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye bye.